Good morning, true crime friends. How y'all doing? Look, it is, it's Monday, April the 1st, April Fool's Day. But listen, I have some very serious stories to talk with you about this morning. And by serious, I mean uh, ridiculous. First of all, uh, Gypsy Rose Blanchard. You remember Gypsy Rose Blanchard? Miss Gypsy, who I feel like we're not supposed to say, we're not supposed to call people gypsies, but it's okay for you to name your child Gypsy. That's like... Isn't that like naming your child the N-word? I don't child, I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna call her Miss Rose Blanchard because I'm not I'm not clear how it works with her first name. So um Miss Blanchard is divorcing her husband. So no, not divorcing, separating. She's probably gonna divorce her husband. But in case you don't know the story, look, let me give you that quick, quick overview because about this story, ooh, it's a little bit creepy. Um uh, Gypsy Rose Blanchard, her mama uh was nuts. I believe there might even be a, a playlist about these people because ooh, ooh. Mm. This lady was a little bit cray cray and um, she held her daughter captive basically for her entire life. Convince, oh, excuse me, convince Miss Rose that she was sick and through Munchausen by proxy or whatever, did all this stuff to make the child real, real sick for a long period of time and convinced her that she was younger than she was. Okay, that's terrible. Um, but then Miss Rose was like, well, you know what I like? boys and you know what i want them to do touch me all over and do nasty things so um she got on the internet she let her google fingers do the walking and she met herself a very nice boy and convinced him to uh unfortunately unalive her mother oops i don't okay so then she and this boy went on the run Fine, fine, fine. I mean, not fine, but you know, it. I guess that's what happens when you munch housing your child. So her and this dude went on the run, and then they got arrested, and they went to jail for a long time. Only the boyfriend who unalived the mama, he got, like, life. And Miss Rose got, like, 10 minutes in jail. While she was in jail, her story came out, and everybody was just like, oh, my goodness, this is amazing. This poor child, she needs a life of her own. And so um, she was like, uh, I've broken up with the unaliving boyfriend, and so now I have more freedom than I've ever enjoyed in my whole life here in the prison. And everybody was like, oh, that's sad, but she's getting out soon because, like I said, she only got sentenced to, like, 10 minutes in jail. Okay, really, it was 10 years, but it was still the most freedom she'd ever had in her life. Here's where things get a little tricky. While she was in jail, she met a dude online who looked a whole lot like her mama. Okay, I guess she was going to what was familiar? I, mm. Anyway, so she started dating this dude who kind of looked like a thumb, but he, he very, very much looked like her mama. And uh, she married him while she was in jail. Sight unseen? Or like... Man untouched. It was clearly a chaste relationship because she was in prison the whole time. And then she got out of prison and she's like, I love him, even though he looks like my mama. He's beautiful. We have a wonderful relationship, even though he looks like my mama. Let's be clear. She didn't say he looked like his mama. I'm saying he looked like her mama. Um, But anyway, so she was like, we're having the best intimate time ever, ma'am, ma'am. What we don't want to know about is marital congress between you and your beloved. Because first of all, nobody cares about marital congress, especially not married people. Like, people, married people do what married people do. But don't nobody want to hear about that? It's like, uh, whatever. Anyway, I'm a married lady, I can tell you. Don't nobody want to hear about your marital congress. But um, he just look, he looked just like her mama. Girl, was you looking at him like, mom, I don't, ooh, the whole thing was creepy. Anyway, um, she just got out of prison. She's never been free in her whole life. And now she's back with her captor, sort of. So after three short months of marriage and her going on social media, raving about how wonderful he is and what a great lover he is, blah, blah, they broke up. Good? I don't, I'm not pro-divorce. Let me just, let me say this right here. I do not at all believe in divorce unless you need one. I mean, I'm not saying like get the, he he left the cap off the toothpaste. You should divorce him. But if it's like, mm, this is not working for me no more, and I might have to unfortunately unalive him, then maybe you should get a divorce. Or if they just get on your nerves real bad, girl, go and get you a divorce. Anyway, speaking of marriage and not divorce, Mr. Gossip Rumor and Innuendo allowed himself to be interviewed on this channel for Easter, which was yesterday. And uh, let me be clear. 
he don't care about this channel. He's just like, okay, go do your little channel thing, whatever. But then when it was time for him to be interviewed, he was like, okay, ask me the questions as he rolled his eyes. He did not appear. His face did not appear on the channel. His voice appeared on the channel. And then all day yesterday, he was like, how many views did it get? How many thumbs ups did it get? What are the questions? What are the comments? What do people have to, sir, calm down. You didn't even want to be on my channel. You, you think me and my little channel should just go on someplace. Now you care how many views your little video got? Okay, relax. So um, I was reading the, I was laying in bed with him this morning, reading him the comments and he did get a chuckle out of him. So thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for me and from Mr. Gossip. And someday he'll appear on this channel. I don't know when that's going to be. And um, he still wants a husky dog. Also, that's never happening because he's married to me and we already have two dogs we can't control. What we don't need is uh, a third dog. No, thank you. Anyway. In other true crime news, Chad Daybell is finally going on trial. Who is Chad Daybell, you say? Now listen, if you don't know who Chad Daybell is, you might be living under a rock just a little bit, but that's okay, because I'm going to bring you up to speed. Chad Daybell was married to Lori Vallow Daybell, known murderess. Uh, Miss Daybell, Miss Vallow Daybell, that was her fifth husband, by the way. Her fifth husband is going on trial. How you somebody's fifth? Okay, whatever. Not my business. Anyway. Lori, there's a whole playlist about Miss Lori. Um, Lori got, she was um, a nice LDS lady, and then she turned into like LDS crazy, right? Because listen, our Mormon friends, our LDS friends, I keep forgetting which one of those we're not supposed to call them. Uh, we're not supposed to, Mormons? I think we're not supposed to call them Mormons, Mormons no more. We're supposed to call them LDS, Latter-day Saints. All right, so Lori was like a regular Latter-day Saint mom, and she was just like doing all the mom things, right? Okay, great. But then she started reading these crazy books by this lady named Julie Rowe. And Julie Rowe was like, yeah, Jesus is my boyfriend and he speaks directly to me. And he tells me things that every time I have a dream, I write it down because that's like scripture and prophecy and whatever else. So she started writing these end time books. And I'm like, mm, like a fantasy novel, girl. OK. And she had a whole bunch of people to follow her. This is what I don't understand. Why was a bunch of people following this crazy lady? I don't I don't get it. So she, um, her books were published by this dude, Chad Daybell. Lori gets into these books and then she's like, I like that author, but ooh, look at that weird looking publisher. He seems like the man for me. And Chad was like, um, hey, Lori, married lady over there. I'm a married man, but I think you're going to be my wife in my next life. And she was like, hee hee. Really? Your next wife? That sounds wonderful. And he was just like, mm hmm. I think you're going to be um, my next wife. So I know what let's do. Let's each kill our spouses and then we can live happily ever after. And for whatever reason, they bonded over religion and then religion, not the Mormon church, their whatever weird old thing they came up with, um, told them and spoke to them and whatever and convinced them to kill their spouses. Okay. Um, I'm not a religious person. But I don't think there are many religions who are like, you know what you should do? Um, don't get divorced because divorce is bad. What you should do is unfortunately unalive your spouse and then y'all can be together and live happily ever after. But that's what these crazy people decided was a good idea. So Lori dispatched with her husband, but she had killed a bunch of husbands before. So that was just like a regular Tuesday for her. And then Chad dispatched with his wife. Okay, that's terrible. They had like 65 kids or something together. And then they were like, okay, we're grieving. Also, we're going to Hawaii and getting married. So two weeks after uh, Chad's wife was dead, he married Lori. Okay. And so then they were like, mm, this is great. The two of us together over here living our crazy fantasies about us being king and queen at the end of the world. And um, the entire, all the righteous people are going to gather here in Rexburg, Utah. Idaho, I don't know, what are the places out west? And they're like, everyone is going to live in tents um, at the end of the world. Wait, what? Can you take me in the first round? I'm telling you right now. If like all these prophecies of the end times or whatever are true, why well, I got to live in a tent? Can't 
Aren't you just like the world is ending and we living at the four seasons? Because that makes sense to me. You would get more people to join your religion if you was going to live in a really, really nice hotel at the end. Like when the, the second coming happens or whatever, like it's the end times. It's doomsday. But there's room service. I would be like, okay, yes, please. I might join your religion. But these people are like hoarding food for the food shortages and you have to live in a tent. No, thank you. Um, when the earth gets destroyed, I would like to go in the first round. Don't be having me out here living in no tent. Cause to me, that's the same thing as being unfortunately unalive. No, nope, 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 nope. Um, so just so you know, I do not want to survive the end times. I would like to be gone, please. And thank you. Um, because to me, that's better than living in a tent and fist fighting over food and clean water and proper sleeping bags in Idaho. Uh, oh no. Oh no. Now, if um the end time happens and I'm at the St. Regis uh in Beverly Hills or something like that, well yes, please. Okay. Okay, can I fly there first class? Because I'm not going on a cover wagon. Why well, these people into suffering? I don't this suffering porn is not for me. Not at all. Hang on, you know I don't talk my throat dry. Hang on, hang on. I'm just so these crazy people have romanticized the end of the world and hoarding food and fish fighting over clean water and killing spouses. And then Lori was like, look, I have these two kids and the kids are great, but they're kind of in our way. So, uh, we're going to have to dispatch with them too. And so they unalived Lori's kids. Now listen, it's a lot of things I could understand. Yes. People dispatch with their spouses all the time. And is that right? No. Just for the record, we here at Gossip Rumor and Innuendo, LLC, and by that I mean me, uh, do not advocating the unaliving of anybody. Not squirrels, not humans, not dogs, not horses, no living creature. I'd be mad if you kill a plant and you won't know the truth. But sometimes in the course of living, you have to do away with a spouse. Is that the right thing to do? Absolutely not. But it happens, okay? Your kids? Nope. It's no story you can tell me that's going to make me be like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, listen, my husband, as delightful as he is, loads the dishwasher wrong every single day. Every day. And you know what I do? I ignore it because that is what marriage is. You th take all the things about that person that drives you crazy and you go, eh, he's mine. That's what I do. When it's your kids, you're like, hmm, he's mine for the next 18 years. Now, you can get them their own apartment, send them to live with an auntie or an aunt, something like that. You know what you're not supposed to do? Unfortunately, unalive them in gruesome and terrible ways. Chad was like, um, my wife wants to get rid of her kids so we can be empty nesters. So I'm gonna help her out with that. Sir, you're terrible. And he's like, and then, um, we're gonna move to Hawaii. We're gonna tell the police. We don't know what happened. Meanwhile, the children who have disappeared were buried on his property. Sir, I am dying to hear what story, what excuse you have for how the missing children mysteriously ended up buried on your property and you didn't have anything to do with it. Also, there's all kinds of text messages and GPS from his phone or whatever of him being in the spot where the kids were buried at the time they were buried. Sir, what story are you going to come up with to explain that nonsense? Because that is some nonsense. Meanwhile, he has this lawyer, John Pryor, who's been on the case for four years. John, um, sir, I'm dying to hear what sort of good excuse, a story, a tale you have to tell about how it is that uh, Chad just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Also, how was he paying you? Because he was a grave digger before and something tells me he don't have four years worth of lawyer money. Turns out, Chad, who had bought a house there in Utah or Idaho or wherever he was living, uh, Idaho, Rexburg, Idaho, I don't know, someplace out west, um, signed his house over to John Pryor. Oh, John, you got yourself a house? What was the value of that house? And something tells me you might have used up all the equity in that house at this point. Anyway, so um, Chad has like five kids or seven kids or eight kids. He got a whole bunch of adult children. They're like, we stand by our father. Um, He did not do those terrible things. And if he did, oops, he's very sorry. Chad's kids? Mm-mm. Y'all looking crazy out here. I sincerely hope that one or more of his children turn on him. They're like, 
you know my daddy always was trash though right he always oh he was chasing tail he was doing terrible things he was mean to our mama i'm dying for one of these kids to come out and be like i have a dissenting point of view and for them to just tell like the real real because i get the feeling that um chad's kids are like regular mormon people can we say mormon i don't even remember listen mormon people please don't be mad at me because i can't remember what y'all's name is if it's lds if it's one of them we're not supposed to call you but i don't remember which one i get the feeling that chad's kids are like regular mormons like the non-murdery kind and they just like they're like we over here just trying to have family home evening and like you know make some nice potatoes and stuff like that i think mormon potatoes are supposed to be especially delicious although i'm not sure why anyway they like we eating our potatoes and and talking to our friends and family and hoarding food in the basement we're not the unaliving kind of mormons we're the like just nice people with a bright shiny smile kind of mormons but um i sincerely sincerely hope that one of his kids uh gives us the real real gives us that tea gives us that good good that's what i want but that's just me last but certainly not least beverly mccallum beverly mccallum oh the state of michigan versus beverly mccallum miss mccallum took the stand on friday to plead her case and explain to us why it is not her fault that um her fifth husband i think he was her fourth husband I think it was her fourth and then she went on to have two husbands after that. I don't know. This lady got a lot of husbands and all of them are dead. I don't. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Ma'am, you're a five-time widow. Who is dating you? This is what I, from the bottom of my heart, I need to know. Who is dating you? But she has a bunch of dead husbands. One of them, well, probably all the ones that are dead, she helped dispatch off this mortal coil. But this husband in particular, um, she's on trial for now. Mr. Rever- Roberto Cabrero, something like that. Anyway, Caballo, um, she killed him. And her daughter, Deneen, helped. And then she was like... <sighs> It's so inconvenient to have to kill a husband. Now I have to move to Jamaica and meet and marry another man who she also killed. But we don't talk about the missing husband from Jamaica. We talk about the missing husband from Michigan. So um, she took the stand on Friday and she was like, um, I'm quiet and shy. I can barely raise my voice to speak up. I'm a surrendered wife. I did whatever Robert wanted me to do because I was just that kind of wife. Okay. Did he ask you to kill him? And she didn't just kill him. She pushed him down a flight of stairs. I don't know what you call what that's called. Just like a stumble death. I don't, I don't know what that's called. Then she bludgeoned him with the hammer, put a plastic bag over his head. She should use reusables, although those are not breathable. I mean, most of them are not breathable, but some of them are. But probably he did not enjoy having a plastic bag over his head. Then she tied a rope around his neck. And then uh, after she killed him that way, then she put him in the trunk of the car. car I'll bet that was uncomfortable no she put him in a trunk and then put that trunk in the trunk of her car and then threw him in a blueberry patch and then lit the blue lit the trunk on fire boof causing a big explosion man and then leaving the scene of the crime she told all the people who helped her throw your shoes out the window in case there's footprints ma'am so you pushed bludgeoned suffocated strangled stuffed in a trunk set on fire and littered i don't She's a terrible, terrible human being. Terrible. And then, um, after that whole debacle went down, went to Jamaica, married another dude. Then he went missing. Uh, but not before she had a son with that last dude. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Now she's got four dead husbands and then the son died. Yet, she's still married. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She found herself a new husband. She's still married. And this current husband supports her. Okay. So she took the stand like, um, I am not a black widow. I am an excellent wife. I speak several languages. Uh, English is my first language. Although if you heard her talk, there's no way you'd be able to tell. She has some sort of weird accent, which is like a hybrid of some of the languages that she speaks and maybe some of the crazy just happening. It's crazy its own language because I feel like in her case, crazy might be its own language. She's like, this is not my fault. My daughter, Deneen, killed my husband Robert and I did not want her to kill him but you know sometimes killings happen and um I don't I I decided that I was gonna stay away from Deneen because she's a terrible terrible person although when I got married again down in Jamaica Deneen was in the wedding 
mm, uh, okay, okay ma'am. Ma'am, you might have been better off not taking the stand. I just, I'm not a lawyer. I know it's shocking to me too. I No, I am not a lawyer. I am not that kind of professional. Um, But I do have some common sense. And so something tells me that you maybe should have just sat there and let your lawyer do the talking. Let's be clear. She going to jail anyway. Because everything that comes out of her mouth sounds like a lie. I'm not calling her a liar because that is not my place. I'm saying she has ways likened unto that of a liar. Listen, back in the day when I was a kid, my mama, who was a nice Christian lady, was like, I cannot go out and be out here calling people bitches because that is a terrible thing. I'm not saying she's that. I'm saying she has ways likened unto that of a bitch. So I'm not saying that this woman is a homicidal maniac but she has ways likened unto that of a homicidal maniac. Does that make it better? I think that makes it better because I would not call this lady names because, you know, Pinky's out, child. I have manners. Look, I also have a job that I need to go to this morning. So um, I'm going to get myself ready and get out of here. In the meantime... Thank you so much for watching this long into this video, child, because I just realized I have run my mouth for 20 whole minutes. Um, Like this video, subscribe to the channel, play bingo if you feel so moved, and um, there's directions in the, the description of this video will tell you how to play bingo. You can get links to bingo cards, and if you win bingo, let me know. Send me a message. Let me see your card, and I will send you a prize. Oh, yes, that's what we do over here, child. We got bingo prizes. All right, you get out there and have a great day. Please don't kill nobody. We'll see you soon. Bye.